Choosing a docking station for your Steam Deck or other chosen handheld can be a little bit confusing. Let's jump into this one, it's the JS Aux. And one of the main differences between this and other docks that I've been sent, and other docks you may have been looking at online, is that this one has not one, but two display outputs. Now, there are a number of reasons why you might want to choose this dock, but you've probably looked online already and you're thinking, well, this one's super cheap, it's like $10, and this one's super expensive, it's like $100. What is actually the main point of getting a dock and how do I choose which one to get? Let's have a look at the features of the JS Aux. Now, quick disclaimer at the beginning, they sent this to me for the purposes of making this video, but I haven't been instructed to say anything specific about it and all opinions are my own. When you choose a dock, there are a number of things you have to consider and one of them is, will it actually do what you need it to do? Even if it looks really cool or if it's really, really cheap, if it doesn't actually do what you need it to do, and for most people that's to plug it into a large external monitor, if it can't do that, then you're gonna be stuck. Is it just adding ethernet and USB ports for you, or is it also capable of sending a video signal to an external monitor? The same way that you would expect to use a Nintendo Switch dock. What's really cool about this dock, which sets it apart from many of the other ones that I've tested is that it does have these two display outputs. Now, if you wanna do stuff at 4K, apparently it does 4K at 60, but mostly I was interested in testing DisplayPort and HDMI for normal full HD video, which can go up to 144 Hertz. So full HD at moderately high refresh rates is awesome, but the other thing is that DisplayPort is quite uncommon. If you have a monitor that only does high refresh rates with DisplayPort, you're going to need this. On my main monitor, which I bought a while ago because I would like to play fighting games, it's 144 hertz, but only through the DisplayPort connection. When I tried the HDMI connection from here to my main monitor, I could only get 60 hertz, and I thought, okay, maybe, like, is the port broken or is the cable broken? Just turns out my monitor is a little bit old. It only does HDMI at 60 hertz. You can use the HDMI port as well, and even though it's only going through this one USB-C connection from the Steam Deck, you can get it to send signals at 144 hertz HD to a DisplayPort monitor and an HDMI monitor. So I was able to use both, and you also get the image on the screen of the Steam Deck as well, which means with two ports, DisplayPort and HDMI on here, you've also got the screen of the Steam Deck for three <laughs> that's six, for three different screens when you're using this device. That's probably the most exciting thing about this dock, but it does get better because these USB-A ports, unlike most other docks which are at USB 3.0 or 3.1, this is USB 3.2, which presumably means it goes up to the higher speed of 10 gigabits per second. Don't quote me on that, but whatever it is, USB 3.2 is obviously faster than USB 3.1. So. If you need that, then you have not one, two, but you have three of those ports. And then on the back here, you have one USB-C port, which is not actually for data, it's just for charging. The version that I've got here, which is $65, but usually about $55 on sale, this version comes with an AC adapter. Now this AC adapter assumes that you're going to be using it with a Steam Deck. And so the AC adapter that comes with it is 45 watts. If you are familiar with handheld gaming, you'll know that a lot of other handhelds come with more powerful charging bricks. I tried it on my Ion Neo Air 1S and it was not able to charge it. And I tried it on the Asus ROG Ally Z1 Extreme, which I also have, and that was not able to really charge. Or is that it was charging, but it said it had like an error message in the corner. So basically, if you have a Steam Deck, this included charger is fine, but if you're not getting it for Steam Deck, just get the version of this, which is cheaper, that does not include the AC adapter because it's not gonna be much use to you anyway. Before USB-C became the main thing, it was really easy to find a dock that had like seven or more. USB-A ports, but now with USB-C, usually you get like a maximum of three USB-A ports, and on this, no USB-C data ports. Usually you just have a USB-C charging port. At most though, if you spend a little bit more on a dock, you might get like one extra USB-C port. So those are all the ports on the back, but you've also got the ethernet port on the side. And that is super important because if you're playing games online, please, please, please do us all a favor do not play on Wi-Fi. It might kind of work, 
but it just makes the experience kind of worse for everyone involved. By putting the Ethernet port on the side, now we have this extra port here for DisplayPort. But having said that, it does mean that this is a slightly longer than average dock. Not that that is a big issue for the Steam Deck because the Steam Deck is nice and long, but on the Aya Neo 1S, and actually it sits not like this, it has to sit a little bit like this because these bumps here on the edge, they're kind of pushing up on the handles of the device. Using your own charger is totally fine because this is just standard USB-C power delivery. So if you had like a 100 watt charger going into here, it should actually send 100 watts through here. And I tested it with my 100 watt charger, and yes, it was able to charge the Ioneer Air 1S. That's always going to be a mouthful. Other things you might like to know is that it does have rubber on the inside to protect the Steam Deck, so if you really like to make sure your devices don't get scratched or anything, there's gonna be no risk of that happening whatsoever because it's not like sharp metal in most places. And even where it does make contact with the dock, it's nice and soft because of these rubberized surfaces. However, it's not perfect because a lot of these docks, they're not that flexible. They've got a set spacing here. And so when I put my Steam Deck into the TPU case that I like to use for it, it adds a kickstand to the Steam Deck, which is how I prefer to use it. But sometimes I want to put it in the dock so I can actually connect it to my monitor. Once you've got a TPU case on here, it like doesn't really fit. Another thing you should consider is that this cable is long enough for the Steam Deck. As you can see, it is on the left side. If you had to move the USB cable to the middle, it'd be a little bit more of a stretch. And as you can see, it's basically impossible to get it to go to this side without being at an angle. The last thing I will say is that this is not really the dock that I use the most. Even though it is probably the most capable, it's got USB 3.2, super fast, and it's also got the ethernet port and two display outputs. It's very capable, but it's not the one I use. And pure and simply, it's because the USB ports are on the back. And I find that very frustrating. When I use my Steam Deck, it's plugged into my TV in my living room, which is where I hang out with my family while I'm playing games. Being able to plug things into the front of the docking station is super important to me. Having to flip it around and then it's just like, I have to choose like when it's sitting next to my TV in the living room, do I have the Steam Deck like sideways? Do I have it facing me? Do I have it facing away so I have access to the cables but then it looks really ugly? Essentially the best dock for me is one that has USB ports on the front, especially if you're using it in a living room. To be honest, even when I was testing it at my PC setup, I just really disliked having to reach around We'll have to go over here to like press these cables in. But that's not really like a big flaw of this specific dock. Almost every dock has the ports at the back. There's only one that I've tested that had the ports on the front and I absolutely loved that one. I just noticed there's rubber feet on the base as well. Not sure about all the different regions, but the one that I have came with these adapters so that you can actually change the shape of the charger. It's a very clever design actually because the AC adapter it comes with, this actually flips out, which is nice so it doesn't stab anything in your bag when you're transporting it, but when you flip it up, it actually does use those flipped up pins to send the power through. Is that common? I've never seen it before, but it's quite cool that these pins, even though they're faced up like this and folded in, you can still access them by using these little covers. I'm not 100% sure what this is for. All right, this is a mystery to me. I don't know why there's a right angled USB-C to USB-C adapter in here, but if you know, let me know in the comment section below. That's it for the JS Aux 7-in-1 dock for Steam Deck or whatever handheld it is you're using. That's all for today. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, like the video and comment below. What is the perfect dock for you? What are all the features that you actually require from your Steam Deck? Because I make a lot of assumptions about what people are using their Steam Deck for when they're docked into their monitors, but maybe you don't even use an external monitor. Maybe you just need extra USB ports or maybe you like the ones that have USB ports on the front. What is the perfect dock for you? Let me know in the comments section below. <sighs> That's all for now. I'll see you real, real soon.